Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of So Tell Us Time. Today, I'm really excited to be talking about holding on too long, getting rid of toxic people. See, in business, when we talk about employees, a lot of times business owners are like, oh man, you know, they they have to deal with these employees or they have dealt with at one point an employee that was just horrible or multiple employees. We recently experienced this where we had um, an employee we had to let go and then we brought another hire in and then that hire couldn't perform the way that they said that they could perform yep. and we had to let them go and then we had to bring another hire in and so we had to go through this transition and it was such a headache and it was such a pain but it was so important for the company to grow and to to con continue to succeed and to not have a toxic situation within the company because when you have a toxic person in the company, it starts to affect the other employees, it yes. affects your clients, it affects everything. So if have you I don't know if you've ever heard this, but I, I love this saying. It says, rotting food doesn't get better with age, it gets worse. And that's the same thing as a toxic employee or honestly someone in your life that's toxic that you really should be cutting out and getting rid of. So let's talk about your employees and what I think most people should do is they should take a step back and look at the employees in their lives. And for anybody that's not doing, that doesn't have employees, maybe look at just people who are surrounding you. Um, you know, peers, people you're doing business with, affiliates, partners, things like that. So if you don't have a whole lot of employees, you can be looking at other people in your business that you're doing work with, and you should be doing this as well. Could even be clients. It could be clients. Yes. In fact, we are probably having to let a client go today because they just are a toxic situation. And we have had to do that many a times over the years. There's nothing wrong with that. Like people think, oh, I, I mean, I can't, if I let, you know, why would I ever let somebody go? It's money. No, money's not everything. Like my mental health and my company and the way that my, um, no, my clients treat my employees that's a big thing for us if right. you don't treat our employees with respect then you're not going to make it here um, as a client for us and so you need to take a look at the people that you're around right so whether that's clients or employees or partners or anything like that people that are in your business life look at them and the questions you should be asking is if you knew today if you knew when you were first hiring knowing what you know about them today would you still hire that person? So you've worked with them for a while now, you've had them in your life, w knowing what you know about them today, would you go back and would you hire them again? And if the question, if the answer to that question is no, then you need to make a change. The other thing would be is if your this employee or this person got poached by one of your competitors and they were working for your competitor, would you be worried? Or would you be happy? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, there's probably a couple of employees that I'm like, man, the best thing I could do is Send have them, them, yeah, have them go over and work for my competitor yes. so that uh, we'll be way more successful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like, you know, sabotage. Send this employee over to my, really talk them up, you know, and then get yeah. them poached. Like, that would be awesome. So you need to look at the people that are in your life. You need to look at these employees and you need to say, if the answer to these questions, these two questions that you just, that I just asked you, if the answer is no, no, I wouldn't hire them and no, I wouldn't be sad that my competitor took them, then you need to be ma making some changes in your business for sure. Um, so Troy, what would be the best thing that someone could do when it comes to like hiring a new employee? Because that's a big headache that we all have. I mean, you have your existing employees, but you know, people are going to come and they're going to go and then you're gonna have to hire new people. And so if you do have a toxic person in your company right now, you want to make sure that you don't make that same mistake moving forward. Right. Yeah. So, you know, again, we're going to be talking about like, you know, how to get rid of them. Right. Yeah. But in order to get <laughs> rid of them, hard. the it's best to way that. to get rid of them is to never hire them in the first place. Yes. So we're going to start back there and then we'll move forward to what do you do now if they are working for you? Yeah. So, yeah. So first and foremost, and you've probably heard this phrase before, but you want to hire slow and fire fast. Yes. You know, and what does that mean? That means don't rush into hiring somebody just because you need a body. Yes. Right. Oh. I know we've had that in our business as well, yes. where it's like, oh, my gosh, we've got 10 projects backed up. You know, we got to get rid of this guy <clears throat> and let's just get somebody in here to do the work. And yep. that's a mistake. Oh, yeah. You know, hire slow, but then fire fast. If they are yeah. not the right person, get rid of them, yep. you know, quickly. Don't yep. wait for them to fail. You know, and again, we're talking about our business, too. Yes. We've done this where it's like, you know, we're six weeks down the road and all of a sudden we're like, 
yeah, this guy hasn't gotten anything done. Yeah. You know, we should have fired him four weeks ago. Absolutely. So again, we're talking from personal experience and that's yep. why we're teaching you guys these things. All right, so let's talk about hire slow and fire fast. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you have a thorough evaluation process to evaluate them in order to hire them. So I'm not talking about like, did I just ask them 10 questions when they came in to be interviewed and you're hired, Yeah. right? No, it's put a process in place to make sure that they're the right person yes. to test them and uh, test their skills, test the way they interact, all those kind of things, right? And I'll give you a perfect example. So when we hire a salesperson, mm -hmm. one of the things we do is um, after we've interviewed them, we will then send them a link to one of our sales presentations. Someone's doing one of our yep. sales presentation and we will give them the slide, right? And then we tell them, okay, we want you in the next 48 hours to take this presentation, learn this presentation, and then record you doing the presentation and yes. send it back to us. Yes. Now, we know, I wanna talk about that process, right? So we do give them the slideshow, yeah. right? Because we don't want them to create a brand new presentation that's gonna suck. We want them to learn our presentation, yes. right? We give them an example of someone doing it well, right? And then we see, can they very quickly in a short period of time learn the presentation and being able to give it back, you know, to us in a pretty quick, you know, yeah. time frame. And beyond that, the thing is, is that we actually, so last time we were hiring sales guys, we had three candidates that we were looking at. Yep. We sent this project off to all three and guess how many actually did the <laughs> assignment? One. Yeah. <laughs> One guy did it. And you know what? He did really good too. So that right, right off the bat, it weeded out two people that looked on paper. They looked amazing. But I was just yeah. reading an article the other day talking about how people are padding their resumes and they're saying they do things that they don't do or that they have done things that they haven't done. Yeah. So this weeded out right from the get go. It weeded out the two people that, that really couldn't do what they said they could do. Yeah, exactly. The other thing we did with it was... Um, again, we weren't expecting them to give a perfect presentation. The one guy who submitted his, it wasn't perfect. Yeah, it's good but enough. the other thing we did is we tested their skills a little bit because we didn't uh, give them or tell them how to record the presentation, <laughs> yeah. how to get it back to us, yes. none of that. We just said, go and do this. And they literally had to go and research and figure out, okay, what software do I need on my computer so that I can record this? And then how am I gonna get this back over to them? And they, you know, they, they straight up told us like, man, I struggled and I had to work yep. and I had to do some research and I had to call some people I knew, yep. but I got it done. Yep. And for us, and I told him after the fact, it was actually like a year later or something, he was asking about that process. And I go, honestly, you know, cause he went back and he listened to his first presentation and he's like, oh my gosh, that sucked. Like, you know, the one he did. And I said, you know what? I go, it didn't really, we didn't really care about the presentation. What we cared about was, were you able to overcome the obstacles, complete the task without us having to micromanage you exactly. and tell you exactly what to do? Yep. Right. So that's one thing. So test their skills, not just their skills is like maybe they're, you know, if you're hiring a designer, like, you know, their design skills, anything like that. No, like I want you to test everything, test their emotions, yeah. test their critical thinking, check, test their ability to take criticism. Oh my gosh. That yes. one's really important because how many times have you sat down with one of your employees and, you know, or a partner or anybody, right? And a client and you're like, hey, look, this is what you didn't do right here. <laughs> and they just flip out, yeah. right? They can't handle the criticism. They blame everybody else, you know, for why it didn't work out. Yes. You know, those are things you want to know in from the very beginning. So by testing them, you can then pull them in for a second interview. You can give them criticism yeah. and you can see how they respond to that criticism. Yeah, because they can't tell you how many times someone has hired somebody and like the standard, you go on Google and you say questions I should ask in an interview and, <laughs> and you know, you give them this hard situation like, okay, what if a client's upset and you know, it's so funny because of course they're going to answer this perfectly in an interview. Oh, I would be very calm and I would talk to the client. And then before making any decisions, I'd come talk to you first. Yeah, freaking right, dude. I can't tell you how many people have given me that answer in an interview. And then the first time there's any kind of criticism from me or from the client, they are just like so mad. They're like yeah. slamming their desk around. They're slamming things on their desk. Like, and it's crazy. And you're like, who is this person? Yeah, exactly. So um, that's another thing too. And so again, test all the different levels from emotion to critical thinking, ability to take criticism, problem solving. We talked about yes. that a little bit as well. Um, and then the next thing is talk to their previous employers. Oh, this please is a, call. Yeah, this is a really important one, right? Because 
you know, if you ask them, hey, can you give me, you know, some references from previous employers that I can call and talk to them? If they can't do that, then (laughs) there's problems, right? Yeah, I had one guy that said, "Um, could it be like family and friends? (laughs) Um, uh, You have a very long history of work. Why can't I talk to any of them? Yes, exactly. (laughs) That's that's a red flag right there. Um, So you definitely wanted to, you know, talk to their, even if they got let go from the job, you know, talk to the previous employer about why they got let go. Sure. Um, So, and a lot of times too, when you ask to talk to their previous employers, they will start sharing more and more stuff. And then you kind of get a real understanding of why they left. I remember we had someone who it was like, you know, we're like, okay, can we talk to one of your previous employers? And they're like, oh crap. Cause basically they didn't have it. They've been unemployed for a very long time, Yeah, but they weren't telling us that on their, you know, Resume. resume. It didn't look like that. They were like, oh, I was an independent contractor, blah, 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 yes. blah. Well, you know, okay, so tell us about, you know, let's talk to one of the guys you've done a project for. Oh, uh, well, there, there's this guy two years ago. Oh, <laughs> okay, right? So, and then finally, set up a trial period with them. Let them know yeah. right up in the, fr- you know, right from the beginning, look, this is a trial period. We're gonna bring you in, you're gonna do the work, we're gonna make sure that we're the right fit for you, you're the right fit for us. Yes. And after a two week period, you know, one month period, whatever you think is best for your business, we're going to sit down and we're going to reevaluate how it's working. And if it's not working, then at that point, you know, we're going to let you go. Yeah. If and, it's working great, then you're on. And the thing is, a lot of questions that we get when we um, are consulting with businesses and they ask us about this trial period, they go, well, does it have to be paid? Yeah, you need to pay the people. <laughs> and so what we do for us is we have like a price range. When we put the ad out there, it's like, hey, this is going to be a 17 to $20 an hour based on your skill set, right? And during the trial period, we tell them you're going to be paid at the $17 an hour yep. for the two weeks. And at the end of the two weeks, we'll do an evaluation and we will determine at that at that time where you fall within the price, you know, that we're going to be paying. Right. So that means they're going to work super hard during yes. that two weeks, do their very best because they want to prove that they're worth the $20 an hour versus $17 exactly. an and hour. And if they don't, then you already know your answer. Get rid of them. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So um, the next thing is setting expectations and standards. So once mm-hmm. you actually hire them, you want to make sure that you set the expectation and you have standards there that they have to meet so that they know those standards. Yeah. So have a system to grade them against your standards expectations and standards and then set it from the very beginning Mm -hmm. so one of the worst things you can do is just be like go out there start doing your job and i'll tell you if you're doing good or not doing good right it's like no tell them exactly what they need to do in order to be good so for example like us okay website designer we need you to be able to communicate with the client and you should be able to finish a website you know within x number of days right right and if they can't do that then they know they're failing right right so they know they know what it takes to succeed and what it takes to fail in the business. And then have frequent evaluations in the beginning to let them know, how you know, doing. how they're doing, right? If they're meeting the standard. Mm-hmm. So that way, you know, you don't get a month or two into it and you're like, yeah, this you're really not working out. What do you mean I'm not working out? Well, we wanted you to do this, this, and this. Well, you never told me that. That's right. Right? So have you. those meetings very quickly with them, you know, in the beginning. One, it'll make them feel more confident in their job, that they're doing a good job. Or it'll also make them not feel confident in the job if they can't do the job and they don't have the skills. That's right. So um, at this point, yeah. I want to jump in here and say that it's funny because not not all people are made to manage employees. Yes. They're not good at it. I, I met with a guy the other day and he's very successful. He has an amazing business, which is incredible because he runs it by himself. He gets all that he does all the ordering he does all the fulfillment he goes out three days a week and he makes a ton of money a ton of money doing this but he has tried to have employees over the years (laughs) and he just can't do it he in fact at one point he was like will you come in and do it can i just pay you to come and i'm like no look i've already got my companies all set up man i know i've I've got my own employees that i deal with and everything i'm not going to come in and and build yours for you that's a full-time job but i did recommend to him i said you need to get someone in here that can do that that can deal with it he didn't have the patience to train him he didn't have i mean it was like come with me you can go with me for three days and then you better be able to do this and it's just like (laughs) dude you and then there was just no oversight and so when he had brought employees over the years they had stolen from him they'd stolen product they'd stolen money they had not gone to work like he just expected them he'd provided them trucks they'd taken the trucks like all sorts of things i mean you're talking tens of thousands of dollars in product and they're selling it they some of them were selling it on the side to like friends and family and stuff like that and just pocketing all the cash and i said you you either have to continue to run this business by yourself which will eventually burn you out or you have to get 
um, someone in here that can handle employees and managing and training them and going through the systems and the processes. So it may be that you can't do this. This is not in your wheelhouse. It's not anything you want to deal with. That's fine. Then you need to get a manager in your business. That would be your first hire is yeah. getting a manager in that you do take the time to train and, and that they know how you want things done. And then from there, you don't have to worry about it, which leads me to, you know, this whole accountability. I want to yes. tell a story with this accountability with your employees. So we had a home inspector that signed up for Sotellus and they were getting reviews using Sotellus and he required all of his inspectors to get reviews as many as they could. He would put in goals. He had, um, you know, prizes and all sorts of fun things that as they would get these reviews and hit their goals, they would get fun things and, you know, rewards and days off and, you know, all sorts of great things, lunches and dinners and movie tickets and all sorts of fun stuff. But he had one home inspector. All of his inspectors could get reviews and would get reviews. He had one inspector that kept saying, uh, people won't do reviews. People won't do reviews. And so he contacted us and he's like, hey, I'm having this one inspector that's struggling saying, you know, people don't like doing reviews. People don't want to do reviews. And, and he's like, what should I do? Can you give him some personal training? And I just said, straight up, this guy's making excuses. It's, it's he's making excuses. Well, I, he's a really good home inspector. You know, he's been worked for me for a long time. You know, I, I, he does a he does a great job. And I said, OK, that's great. But why is it that all of your other inspectors can get reviews and he can't? Well, I mean, you know, I don't. And he's trying to make excuses for this guy at this point. And I said, listen, very simple. Here's my suggestion. I want you to go and contact the last 10 jobs that he did. Contact them and ask them how he did. Yep. And so the home inspector said, okay. And I said, and then come back, come back to me and I'll help you from there. So he goes and he contacts him and he calls me back and he's like, oh my gosh. He goes, I can't even believe it. He goes, these clients are so upset. He did not do a good job for them. He did not give good reports on, on these different things. He missed stuff. And, and he goes, I can't believe that these clients weren't contacting me. He goes, oh, why wouldn't they contact me? And that's the thing. People some people like to complain and I understand, especially with social media nowadays, we feel like everybody complains about everything. <laughs> but in all honesty, I have seen that the majority of clients, they don't want to complain and they it's, it's you know, they just don't feel like they should have to deal with any of this. Right. So instead of complaining and contacting and getting it into an argument or anything like that, they just let it go, but they'll never recommend you and they'll never hire you again. Yeah, they won't complain to you. That's right. Right. They won't tell you what went wrong, but they'll tell everybody else out there what went wrong. Exactly. You know, that like in this case, you know, with the home inspector, right? I'm sure they were telling the real estate agent that they were working with. Yes. Oh, my gosh, this home inspector. They suck. They did a horrible job, blah, 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 blah. So now that realtor is going, well, I can't refer any more business exactly. over to him. Right. So he doesn't know what's going on. Right. They're not complaining to him. Exactly. But his, but his name is getting destroyed, destroyed. And so the thing was, is he had to let this guy go. The guy, it wasn't that people wouldn't do reviews for him. People are happy to do reviews. Trust me, we've got tens of thousands of them that roll in. And so we know people will do reviews. And that's why I knew something else was going on. He had to let that guy go. He wasn't able to get reviews because he wouldn't even ask the people because he knew he would get negative reviews from all of these people. He knew he wasn't doing a good job. So it was a great checks and balance for him. But that's the thing is you need to have these systems and processes in place. And maybe it's reviews. Maybe you should be getting reviews. If you're not, right. get reviews. Require your employees to ask and get reviews. And it will be a telltale if they can't do it. Exactly. All right. So kind of uh, going off of that, you know, what do you do if it's not working out? So we're mm -hmm. going to talk about that, you know, so you've tried, you've helped them. What do you do? So first and foremost, this is really important to protect your business. You want to document their failures yes. or inability to follow the company rules. It's important for you to have documentation showing that they aren't doing the job. Yep. Right. So you and you can't just say, well, I had to fire them because they, they didn't do a good job. No, <laughs> that's not going to protect you at all. Right. But if you have documentation, if you have write ups, if you have all these other things, meetings with them, you know, with notes to the meetings of why, where they're failing and why they're not doing their job, stuff from your, your customers saying that they did a terrible job. Yeah. You want to document all of that. And then don't be afraid to write them up. 
Yes. You know, like in our company, we have a very, we go over it from day one with our employees. Look, we have a process, you know, where these are the rules. If you break the rules, you're going to get written up for those. If you break three rules, then yep. we're going to have a meeting with the owners of the company. Yep. And these are the outcomes that could be, a, you know, the potential outcomes of breaking those rules. Which right? one of them is being fired. They exactly. know that from the get go. Exactly. And it's protection to us to say, look, the client or the sorry, the employee knew this from the very beginning. Here's all the documentation saying that they didn't obey the rules. You know, they weren't doing what we told them to do. And here's the meetings we had with them. Now, in those meetings, the point of the meeting is one to discuss it, but also to let them know, hey, look, here's how you're failing and here's how you can fix it. Yeah. Right. So you give them the opportunity to try and fix the situation if they can. And then if they fail again, now you have even more proof of why you need to let them go. Yes. So, um, you know, if they if they know that they are failing, the great thing about it, too, about, about letting them know that things yes. aren't going quite right is a lot of times if they know they're failing, then they're most likely going to solve your problem <laughs> by looking for another job. Yeah, you don't even have to fire. Them. Yeah, you don't have to fire them, which is great, right? Because it's better to the writing is on the wall. Exactly. It's better for them to leave than for you to fire them, you know, if that work, if it can work out. Yeah, that because way. everybody's afraid that they're, I mean, really when letting, we get attached to people. If you're like us, we hate, I mean, I do, I hate firing people. I, I read an article one time and I can't remember who it was. Maybe you'll remember, but they loved firing people. They would, <laughs> it was like every six months there was a big review within their company. Yes. And this was a multi-million dollar, maybe billion yeah. dollar business. Oracle. And the guy was known, yes, Oracle, he was known for firing people. So if you, you had these like percentages and you were graded through um, throughout the six months for your yeah. work. And then if you were, fell below those percentages, you were immediately fired, right? Yeah, yeah. It was like the bottom, like everyone was graded on a scale and the bottom 25% every, I think it was every six months, let go. <laughs> it was crazy. I mean, so that dude, he <laughs> loved firing people and it worked well for him. We don't like doing it. No. We don't want to have a revolving door. In fact, we want to go back to old business where it's, you know, family oriented, you do things together, you have camaraderie, you stay with us until retirement. We want people to retire with us. We don't want revolving doors. We don't want to have to retrain people. We want to get the right people from the get go. And then we want to keep them forever. And we want to make sure that we reward them well, we pay them well, we have all the things set up in our company to want them to stay with us. Yes. Right. And the thing is, is that so I get it. It's a it's an emotional connection you get with these people. So it's hard to do it, but you have to cut them out. You have to get rid of it because it will literally start to bring down the rest of the company. And within our company, we have we, we take care of a lot of clients and we don't have tons of employees. We're taking care of over thirty eight hundred clients with less than we're doing 10, 10 employees or less at any given time. And so people are like, how in the world do you do that? Well, our people are not employees. They are family and they are team members. Yep. They are a part of this and they they believe in what we're doing just as much as we do. And when you get one in here or two that don't, it really brings down everybody. It drags everybody down with them. And so we had an employee that was like this. Everybody would laugh and joke and have a good time and, you know, talk to each other and, you know, hang out after work and, and do all these different things. But this one employee just wouldn't do it. He yeah. wouldn't participate. And he just kind of, you know, exiled himself. And, and that's okay. He was really focused and that was nice. But... Really quick, I'll throw, throw in a story there. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, but like oh. to the point of like it yes. was his birthday. So we did a big, uh, lunch. we always do lunch, you know, for everybody's birthday. We buy lunch for the whole company yeah. and, and we celebrate the person. <sighs> and we, so it was his birthday. We celebrate him. So you know, dumb. We're all there. And not only does he not say a single word to anybody <laughs> who's trying to engage with him, um, yes. he doesn't even eat the food. Yes. He literally just sits yes. there and won't eat the food, won't talk to us, and like just looks off in the corner like he's mad at us for throwing him a party yes. for his yes. birthday. We had to force him to come down to eat lunch with us, and then he <laughs> refused to. He wouldn't look at us, and we're yeah. like, what is going on? Like, this is crazy. Yes, and so... The thing was, is that he was somewhat of a cancer to the company. He yeah. was really starting to, and he was had attitude with everybody. He would go into different employees' offices and he'd fight with them and argue with them. And anytime we'd ask him to do something a different way, he would explode about it. And I was like, man, what, are our clients even happy with this guy? Like, I'm struggling with them, but man, 
I got to, I got to find out what's going on with the, with the clients. And so, you know, we did the process, we would write them up and do all the things that we were supposed to do. But what was crazy is every time we would contact, Troy and I personally would contact our clients and we'd say, hey, how's it going with him? How are you happy with the project? Are you happy with the results? You know, has he been pleasant to work with? I'm thinking and I'm thinking these people are going to be like, oh, my gosh, I hate this guy, you know, and everything. Yeah. Every time they would be like, oh, he's doing so good. He's working so hard and he's just so nice and and he's really trying and we're we're happy. We're happy. We're happy. And that's what we and Troy and I kept thinking, oh, my gosh. Well, listen, if they're happy, then we'll just have to deal with it. Like if he's making the clients happy, we'll deal with the other issues. Now, as it evolved and got worse within the company, we then were like, okay, even though he's making clients happy, we've got to let him go. And so eventually everything comes to a head and he has to go. And what's funny is it wasn't (laughs) until he was gone that then clients were coming back and saying, you know, I really didn't like what he did. His work really wasn't that good. And we're going, why didn't you tell us? We contacted you. Like we, we called you, we emailed you. We wanted to know, like we were looking to find out if he was in, well, I mean, the thing was, is that like, he would tell me that he knew better. Like I would say, I don't like this. And I mean, all these stories came out of like, he basically told them that they were dumb. They didn't know what they were talking about and that he was the professional and they should listen to him. And they were like, so we didn't like, we, we thought, well, yeah, I guess he is the professional. We're hiring you guys to do this. And they felt in a way, honestly, probably bullied, right? Yeah, exactly. And they and they told us, they're like, we love you guys and we just didn't want to like cause a problem. And yes. so like it, our, our relationship with them was affecting it because they yes. didn't want to tell us, you know, that they weren't happy with the client know, because they I loved know. working with us, just not Which him. is great because I was like, oh, well, thank you so much. We love you. Like, we're so glad that we have this <laughs> awesome bond. But that because we have this awesome bond, you should tell us. And so yes. he was actually affecting so much more than just internally in the company. He was affecting other clients. And we did and we did end up losing one or two. But again, they didn't tell us that until when we contacted him and said, hey, and we assumed it was him. They said, no, no, no. Oh, we just shifted directions. We're doing something different. Da, da, da. But after words after they were he was gone and then we contacted that customer again they told us they were like no yeah i did leave because i just wasn't happy blah 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 and they kind of you know let it all come out and we were like oh my gosh like so he affected a whole lot so here's the thing at the end of the day if you follow these processes from right from the get-go of hiring people all the way through you know eventually if you have to fire people and we even gave you a little trick in there of like if you're letting them know that they're not succeeding at this company they're crazy to not be looking for another job honestly i mean that's you know and if it doesn't if they don't rectify the situation themselves then eventually you can't be afraid to let them go you have to let them go you have to get it out of there now on the flip side of that there was one time that i was really struggling with an employee and I just really wanted to fire him. I wanted to fire him so bad. And I was talking to a friend of mine and he simply said to me, he said, you know, Trevor, do you think it really will be better with the next person? And he said it in a way, he said, do you want to work with the devil you know or the one you don't? (laughs) And that hit home pretty hard. And I was like, you know what? You're right. Because I don't know that just by getting rid of this guy and going and hiring somebody else, hiring this person, that it's going to get any better. It could get worse. It could be a headache, which is what we just experienced. And we did lose a client or two over it where the we had to let this employee go because he was cancer. And then we brought another employee in. But, you know, he slipped through our our hiring process and he really by and that was unfortunate, really check the resumes, do your due diligence, make sure you're talking to former employees because his resume was super padded. And so we had to, but we had to let him go and we did quickly. And then we got another person in and they have been amazing. And so it's been great, but we even have gone through the same thing. So think about that. Do you want to work with the devil, you know, or the one you don't, because don't just go out and just start firing everybody because you're like, you know, you're right. They've screwed up once or twice or this and that and da, da, da. No, like really build a culture and build a team so that you can build your company. And that's how, when you start seeing these people as equals in the company, as team members, their family, you want the best for them. You care about their home life and their personal life. You care about all of them in, in, in a whole. 
they will in turn care about you and care about your life and your family. And then you all start to work together. So really just take a great, you know, step back and and do an evaluation of the company and yep. see who's in it and who's around you, who, what, you know, partners are around you, what affiliates are around you, you know, what groups you're in, all of that. Anybody you're surrounding yourself with business, take a look at them. And I know we kind of, focused on employees and how to hire them and how to get rid yep. of them and all this stuff. But it really is everybody in your life. It's everyone in your business life that could be dragging you down or affecting you. Believe me, everybody likes to give their two cents and thinks they're experts on everything. <laughs> so make sure you're careful of who you're surrounding yourself yes. with. Um, that's it for today. Anything else, Troy, you want to add? No, that's it. Again, just remember those two questions. You know, would I be worried if this employee worked for my competitor yeah. or would I do I wish this employee works my, for my competitor? <laughs> yes. You know, that's a big one. And then would I hire this person now after having worked with them? So yeah. just start from those two questions and be honest with yourself yeah. and you'll know what to do. Yes. Well, thank you guys for spending time with us again on this awesome Tuesday. We love you. So tell us time is so fun. We do it every week. Please share it with everyone. Get it out to your friends and family. We want to help everybody grow. We have goals of our own and it is to help businesses grow. There's plenty of money like we always say out there. We really appreciate you guys. Have a sensational day.